Good morning and welcome to worship here at Mount Olive Lutheran Church in South Surrey, British Columbia. We are deeply grateful for your presence, your support, and your participation this day as we gather on the unceded inter traditional territory of the Semiamu First Nations. Today is a festive Sunday. It is Palm or Passion Sunday. We go with Jesus as he enters into Jerusalem during the last week of his life. So it's a celebrative mood. It's festive. People are excited as this one enters into town. In Mark, it doesn't talk about palm branches, it talks about leafy branches. So this morning we use leafy branches as we welcome Jesus into our midst. Let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds and lives for worship this day. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Mercifully assist us, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life everlasting. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The scripture reading is from Mark chapter 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem, Epithage, and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told him what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the coat to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to give, give him thanks, thanks and praise. We praise and thank you, O God, for the great acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was acclaimed Son of David and King of Kings by those who scattered their garments and branches of palm in his path. We ask that you bless these branches and those who bear them and grant that we may ever hail him as our Lord and King and follow him with perfect obedience through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In, in the, the name, name of, of the Lord. Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in, in the highest. highest. Opening hymn is hymn 344. All glory, laud, and honor will sing verses 3 and 4. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
hosannas ring to you before your passion they sing their hymns of praise to you now high exalted our melody we raise the lord be with you and also, and also with, with you. you let us pray Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him, for they said, Not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came in with an alabaster jar, a very costly ointment of nerd, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But there were some that said to the, one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her, but Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me, for you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, whatever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in an order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, the disciples said to Jesus, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. And whenever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve. And when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. Jesus said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, 
This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But Peter said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated and said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it was possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you are all things, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Jesus came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour, keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial? The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough! The hour has come, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were abandoned? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and now he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none, for many gave false testimonies against him and their testimonies did not agree. Some stood up and gave false te testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent, 
and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock, cock crowed, and the servant girl, on seeing him, began again to stay to the bystanders. This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while, the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, You say so. Then the chief priest accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowds to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call King of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort, and they clothed him in a purple robe, and after twisting some thorns into the crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him. Hail, King of the Jews! They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to them. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. 
Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with them, they crucified two bandits. One is on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests, along with the scribes, were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way, he breathed his last. Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger, and of Josie and Salome. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When evening had come, and since it was a day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of a rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Jose saw where the body was laid. And the people cried, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David, Hosanna. The word literally means save us. And Jesus enters into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. 
Not a war horse, not a platform elevated by six strong men, not a chariot drawn by powerful, magnificent steeds. No. Jesus enters into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. Jim Taylor writes, almost anywhere in the world, the, donk the donkey is a symbol of humility. They are beasts of burden. Traditionally, women rode donkeys. Men characteristically felt humiliated riding on a donkey. If they couldn't have a horse or at least a mule, they would rather walk. Not by chance do our Christmas cards show Mary riding on a donkey en route to Bethlehem. Although the Bible itself says nothing at all about their, their means of transportation. In the Middle East, in India, in Africa, pregnancy rarely won special treatment for women. It was the macho mentality, not necessarily compassion for his partner, that would have kept Joseph's feet on the ground. On the other hand, the New Testament scholar William Barclay argues that among the Hebrews, a donkey was not a despised beast, but was, was a noble one. It was used by kings. Barclay writes, when a king went to war, he rode on a horse. When he came in peace, he rode on a donkey. Though there are numerous scholars that respond to Barclay by saying, any king who arrives on such a pathetic creature must be coming in peace. In essence, saying that such a king would be admitting his weakness, his vulnerability, his inability to go to war, it was as if he was raising a white flag. And the people cried, Hosanna, save us. What they wanted was another King David. What they wanted was someone who would crush and destroy their enemies, their oppressors. One that would slay the Romans and restore the glory and honor of bygone days. Save us. And in response, Jesus rides into town on a donkey. And the people cry out, Hosanna. And he sat at a table with his disciples and he shares a meal. A meal that was not given in his honor, but rather a meal where Jesus becomes the host. And as the meal progresses, Jesus bends down, stoops down, and washes his disciples' feet, and he talks about love and discipleship and servanthood. And it is at this meal that Judas leaves to betray Jesus, but by the end they will all go and do likewise. And the people cried, Hosanna, save us. How quickly those cries change from save us to do away with this man. Crucify him, crucify him. And they dressed him in purple cloak and not to worship him but to mock him. And the crown not made out of gold or silver but rather it was a crown of thorns placed upon his head and in bitter sarcasm they taunted him. They said, Hail, hail, King of the Jews. And the people cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna, save us, save us. And Jesus is led to Golgotha, to the place of the skull, and there he is crucified. A terrible, horrible, horrific, barbaric death. Death on a cross. Killed as a common criminal, and there on the cross he breathed his last. And the people cried out, save us. And we today cry out, save us. Save us from ourselves. Save us from our brokenness, from our pain and our anguish. Save us from everything that is cruel and ugly in the world today. Save us from our fears and from our anxieties. Save us from that which is evil and demonic and life-taking. And in response, Jesus dies on a cross. Paul puts it, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God as something to be grasped or held or exploited. Our society says, take advantage of your opportunities. Seize the moment, aspire to greater things, not less. Strive for upward mobility. That's where life is to be found, we are told. 
we sympathize with those who are experiencing downward mobility, whether it be through aging or retirement or sickness or ill health or being fired or unemployed, divorce, death. Jesus did not count equality with God as something to be grasped or to be held onto. He emptied himself. Did not fill himself, was not full of himself. No, he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant found in human likeness. He humbled himself and became obedient, obedient to the point of death, death on a cross. And the people cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna, save us. And the ironic thing is, is that that was precisely what Jesus was doing. Saving, salvaging, redeeming, not through our ways and means, but through God's ways. Jesus rides into town on a donkey, a beast of burden, comes in peace and humility, bears our burdens and our sins, not grasping, not manipulating, not exploiting, but rather through emptying and serving and dying. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Save us. Save us. And quietly and softly, Jesus responds, and he does so passionately. He says, I am. I am. I am because I love you. Amen. The hymn of the day is hymn three, four, five. Jesus, I will ponder now. And we'll sing verses one, two, and three. <laughs> Terminations. 
we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. I, believe I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ God's, God's only Son, our Lord, who was, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was, was crucified, died, and was buried. He, he descended to the dead. dead. On, On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility. Redeem your people from pride and the certainty that we always know your will. Heal us and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Hear us, O God, your mercy, mercy is great. In creation, life springs from death. Redeem your creation, awaiting resurrection. Restore lost habitats and endangered species. Create new possibilities for areas affected by climate change, especially island nations and coastal areas. Grant relief from natural disasters and nurture new growth. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Jesus was handed over to the powers of this world. In all nations, instruct the powerful that they would not exploit their power but maintain justice. Sustain soldiers and police officers and guide those who command them that they serve those in greatest need. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. On the cross, Jesus joined all who feel forsaken. Abide with those who are condemned to death. Defend those who are falsely accused. Console and strengthen those who are mocked or bullied. Accompany all who suffer, especially Katrina, Michelle, Pastor Kathy, Esther, Olaf, Nikki, Harvey and Kara, Mark, Sonia, Murray, Ada, Arlene, Deborah, Evelyn, Colleen, Ruth, and those we name before you now. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy, your mercy is, is great. great. You call followers to tend Jesus' body in death. Sustain health care workers, hospice workers, and funeral directors. Bless this congregation's ministries at times of death, those who plan and lead funerals, and all who offer support in grief. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. You inspired the centurion to confess Jesus as your son. We praise you for the faith you have given to people of all places and times. Give us also such faith to trust the promises of baptism and with them to look for the resurrection of the dead. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Teach us to love as you do caring for one another, generous with what we have, and a part of your good and reconciling work in the world. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. Give, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Receive the benediction. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and as beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you might be a blessing to others in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn, O Thou Eternal Christ of God. It is printed on the back page of your bulletin. the good news. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.